Hey everybody and welcome to uh, AD430 uh, Controls. Controls Engineering and Office and Design. So uh, what I have here is a rotational mechanical system with a gear inside of it. So this is uh, an interesting problem because you actually have to transport for forces and impedances through this gear system. So we have values for all of these uh, different parts of the system up here. So the springs, the the gears, the dampers, there's a damper within the gear. This is something really important to notice. Otherwise, you miss it and you'll screw up the entire problem. Uh, but then we also have the masses moving around, and then we have a torque being applied over here. So what we have to do is find the transfer function. But obviously, to find the transfer function, we first have to define the equations of this system. But you can't do that with gears right here, because this spring is has a gear ratio related to it as it goes towards the so you have to transfer either this side through the gears or the spring down through the gears. Now, you may think that since the spring is hooked on to a permanent wall over here, that you can't transfer it down and you have to transfer this stuff up here. That is not true. You can transfer things that are attached to walls down through gears and that's totally okay. You can just, the wall is not really existent. You don't have to think about that as a, a, a real system. You can just say that this little point is fixed. And so long as it's fixed when it goes through the gear, that's okay. You cannot move this part of the system through the gears because this is able to move independently of the gear. So there's no way to accurately transfer this impedance through this gear and up and over because you've got the spring, so the impedance is going through the spring, and then it's going through the gears before it gets back over here. So if you have two separate rotational pieces, on one side that are able to move independently of each other outside of the gears, then you have to bring everything down to their side. So we're going to transfer this uh, spring through this gear system down over here. I'm going to draw this out for you. So we're going to have J2 to the spring of K2. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. K2 going over to J1, just like this. And the torque stays the same, the omega one, theta one stays the same. But then over here, we transfer the spring through, and we're going to call it K equivalent, just like that. But then we also have a damping caused by the gears. Now this is the part where a lot of people screw up on this problem, so the, you watching. You actually have to put that damping ratio in parallel with the spring. Now, a lot of people get confused by this because they think the damping's right here. Why isn't it in series? It's not in series because a gear does not move independently of this mass. So it has to be attached to this mass. But the spring also does not move independently of this mass because of this gear system. This is all a rigid system. So this spring is directly connected to this mass, and this damping is directly connected to this mass. So when you draw them up over here, they can't be in series because you would create a third um, possible rotational area between the spring and the damper if they were in series. So you have to put them in parallel because they are both directly connected and related to this mass. So you got to put them in parallel. So we're going to call that one <coughs> uh, D equivalent. Now, and in solving for D equivalent, the K equivalent and D equivalent, K equivalent is equal to uh, the original spring times the gear ratio which is destination, N2 over N1, over source, squared, because we're moving an impedance through the gear system. So whenever you're moving an impedance, you square the gear ratio. And then if you solve that out, that's going to be equal to 48 um, if you put these values in. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Um, and then the, the damping equivalent ratio will be D2 plus D1 times destination over source again, squared, because again that's an impedance, that's going to be equal to 10. So see how I'm adding these. D2 doesn't get transferred through a gear, so you just add it to the damping of D1 that's induced by the gear ratio. So that's why you add this up like that. Alrighty, so now, since we have those two things, we need to uh, develop our equations. So at theta 1, we're going to, uh, I'll go up here, I'll call this 1 and theta 2. Okay. So theta one, this is going to be J one. 
you have a torque being applied, then you have the resistance of the spring, K2 times theta 1, and then you have the inertia, basically, J1, S squared, theta 1, and then if you, this is with uh, J1 moving and J2 held, con held still, but if you hold J1 still and have J2 rotate, you'll now have a resistance of K2 times theta 2. Because when this is held still and this one's rotating, the spring is going to pull on that one opposite to where it was normally pulling when it was just moving. So the first half of it, you rotate this thing with that spring held on there and this part held constant, and then you hold this part constant, rotate this around here and see what kind of forces. All of these forces applied on this. Okay. So there's that. If you solve out that equation, you'll be getting, uh, that'll be J1 S squared plus K2 times theta 1 minus K2 theta 2 is equal to torque. So we're going to use that equation here in a minute. And then for the other mass, J2, got theta 2 rotating this direction. You're going to have the resistance due to motion. J2 S squared because you're moving J2 and J1 is uh, held still. Squared. And then you have the damping, the equivalent damping times S times theta 2 because it's damping times velocity times the displacement. And then you go right here and you've got, you also have the resistance of Ke plus K2 theta 2, so the two springs. And they are related to the distance pulled. And then if you hold this one still and just rotate J1, then you get an opposite resistance of K2 theta 1. There we go. And if you solve out all these values here on this one, you'll end up with an equation negative K2 theta 1 plus J2 S squared plus D E S plus K E plus K2 theta 2, and that's all equal to zero. Um, each one of these S's is a Laplace transform or a derivative, however you want to consider it. So if you wanted to turn these into differential equations, each one of these S's would become a dot or a derivative. So that's something to remember if you're not all, don't already know that already. So now solving these two equations, we have to get the transfer function of theta 1 over T. Well, we have theta 1 and we have T over here. We also have theta 2. So the easy way, one way to do this, you can use matrices or you can uh, just solve for theta 2 and sub it into the other equation because you basically have a system of equations here. So we can do that. <coughs> um, and I'm going to go ahead and make theta 2 is equal to K2 theta 1 all over J 2s squared plus V E S plus KE plus K2. And uh, that's solving this equation over here for K2. Then you go ahead and sub this into this equation. So this goes here, and then that subs back into there. Continue that on the next page. Okay, so we've got, subbing that in, we got G1 S squared plus K2 times theta 1 minus K2 squared all over J2S squared plus D E S plus K E plus K2 times theta 1 is equal to T. So now we have T and theta 1 related to each other, and we can get the transfer function directly from this. <laughs> um, so I'm actually going to skip some of the algebra steps and just uh, move right on through here with this because it's uh, just a lot of effort otherwise. Well, no, I'll, I'll show it all to you. Uh, J1 S squared plus K2. J2 S squared. All of this is algebra. If you just want to go ahead and work it from here or in the video, the really hard control parts are over. And the rest of this is just manipulating the equation so that it works all over. J2 S squared plus D E S plus K E plus K2. Minus K2 squared. Okay. Yeah. And 
So then theta 1 over t is equal to 4 s squared plus 10s plus 49. This is inputting all the values in here and calculating them out. I'll let you do that because it's just going to take too long otherwise. All over 8s to the 4 plus 20s cubed plus 102s squared plus 10s plus 48. And that is a transfer function that's uh, almost finished, but it's not really in proper form. To be in proper form, the leading coefficient has to be 1 in the denominator. So we have to divide this whole thing through by 8. And I'm actually not going to do the complete math on that either. I'm just going to show it to you. This will actually be equal to 4 over 8 s squared plus 10 over 8 s plus 49 over 8 all over s to the 4 plus 20 over 8 s cubed plus 102 over 8 s squared plus 10 over 8 s plus 48 over 8. Now, these would be really easy sim sim simplifications, but if you're in a test and you're in a hurry, these fractions are usually okay with your professors. So I'm not going to solve these out just because it takes a lot of time to punch in all those buttons and get the correct answers out. But this is the complete transfer function for the rotational system that we started with. And you can see we just took the gears through there. The gears is the only hard part on this and the fact that there is a damping ratio included in them. But once you have that, you can just crank right on through it and solve this out. Another way to do this bottom part is you can do a matrix using uh, delta and k and you take, the, you take the inverse and then you take the, divide it by the determinant and you're able to get the transfer function out of that. But that's kind of a, uh, a harder system when you can just uh, solve a system of equations like this and actually make it a little bit clearer for you. So, there's your transfer function.